Hello. My name is Beth Barnes, and I'm a faculty member in the Department of Integrated Strategic Communication here at UK. I'm very happy that you're interested in our study abroad programs in Cape Town, South Africa for this summer. The purpose of this presentation is to tell you a little bit about the programs and also how the application process will work. So these programs are taking place in Cape Town, South Africa. There are two programs. They run back to back, so it's possible for students to do either one or the other or to do both programs. Um, one after the other. And this first picture is taken from the top of Table Mountain, which is one of the iconic landmarks in Cape Town and, in fact, in the world. It's one of the seven um, new natural wonders of the world. And what this is looking out to is off here in the distance is Robben Island, which is a place that we will go in both programs. That's where Nelson Mandela and the other political prisoners were held during the apartheid regime. And then this is Lion's Head. And I don't know if you can quite tell on this, but it's called that because it does look like the silhouette of a lion lying down. This is the World Cup Stadium in Cape Town. Anyway, lots to see, and you'll see a, a bit more as we go on through this presentation. We do these programs in partnership with Arcadia University. Arcadia is another United States university. They are a private school based right outside of Philadelphia. And like many private universities, they are very big on study abroad, and they have had a program in Cape Town for quite some time. They run full semester programs working with several of the different universities in the Cape Town area, but they also do specialized programs such as the ones that we are doing with them from UK. The program staff are natives of Cape Town. They grew up there. They know the region very, very well. And so we're able to take advantage of their knowledge in our program. Where we stay is a neighborhood near the University of Cape Town, which is one of the major universities in the city. And it will feel very comfortable to you from your experience here in Lexington. There are coffee shops, a laundromat, you know, the kinds of things that you would tend to expect in a college area. Each student will be given their own local cell phone provided by Arcadia. It will have some talk time already loaded on it, and then you'll top it up as you go along. And we use those so that you can make local calls, particularly to get taxis or Uber, whatever you're going to use to transport yourself outside of our class programs. But Arcadia also oversees all of the safety and health-related issues of this program. And it's something that they do very well. Um, and I think that it is a place where, even though it will be very new to you, I think you'll find yourself feeling comfortable in Cape Town very quickly. 2019 will be actually the eighth year of our program focused on working with nonprofits in the townships around Cape Town. And then this year is the first year that we're trying out the wine promotion program as well. So we have quite a history of working with Arcadia, and we do things work well together. This is where we stay. This is Carmichael Guest House. It's a bed and breakfast run by a lovely family. Um, they have two college-age daughters themselves, and the family lives on a property in the back of the guest house. You will be sharing a room with anywhere from one to maybe four other students, depending on which room you go into. Each of the rooms has its own private bathroom. Um, the picture that you see over here, this is when we do lecture sessions, and we don't do a lot of those. Uh, most of what we do is, is being out and about and learning as we go. But when we do our lecture sessions, we do them at Carmichael Guest House in the breakfast room. And so that's where these students are sitting. Um, breakfast is at the guest house every morning. Lunches and dinners, either we do out as a group or else you're given money to go towards the cost of your meals. But as I'm sure you can see, it's a very, very lovely setting. So let me talk first about the course that we've been running the longest, Strategic Communication in South Africa, Promoting to the Rainbow Nation. At the time that South Africa truly became a democracy, with the unbanning of the African National Congress and the release of the political prisoners, um, Archbishop Desmond Tutu coined the, the phrase Rainbow Nation to describe the multiplicity of peoples and cultures that make up South Africa. And the Western Cape, where Cape Town is located, is the most diverse area, and so you will just see a wide range of people. This program, we leave the U.S. on the Tuesday after U.K.'s graduation, which in 2019 will be May the 7th. It's a three-week-long program, um, and we will depart Cape Town on May the 28th, arriving back in the U.S. on May the 29th. The application deadline, actually, for both programs is February the 12th, and you will earn for this program four credits. One credit for EAP 599, which is an education abroad program 
course number, and then three credits for either ISC 497, Special Topics, or ISC 491, if you are choosing to take this course to fulfill your capstone requirement in ISC. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. This program is open to all majors at all levels. Um, The photo here is last year's group, and they are at Cape Point, which is one of the places that we will be visiting. Um, Beautiful nature reserve and the chance to see oftentimes baboons, um, ostrich, different kinds of wildlife, and again, just a truly beautiful place. You'll probably hear me say beautiful over and over again, because that's really the best word to describe Cape Town. This is actually looking back at the city from a boat going out to Robben Island. This, you might be able to guess just from the look of it, is Table Mountain. Um, And we do go up there as part of the course. And then in the foreground before it is some of the, the shipping port of Cape Town. You'll get to see quite a lot of the city during the time that we are there in the program. The nonprofits course has three major components to it. The first is really learning about the history and culture of South Africa as a whole, and particularly that Western Cape province where Cape Town is located. Um, We'll visit a number of different sites, and we will have some lectures on this as well. We also, during the second weekend that we're in Cape Town, do an overnight homestay with families in the Gugaletu Township. Um, The way that that works, there are at least two students with each family, so you would not be on your own. All of the families do certainly speak English, and all of them are members of a major church in the area. Um, We have worked with the same host families for years, and I can tell you they are just truly lovely people who you'll enjoy getting to meet and spend time with. So we do go to Robben Island. Um, As I mentioned earlier, that's where Nelson Mandela and the other political prisoners were held during apartheid. We start out by doing a bus tour around the island itself to learn a little, little bit about the history and get a sense of the geography. That does involve a stop, and you can see here, this is with Cape Town um, featured in the background from this frame. And then after the bus tour, we do a walking tour through the former prison. And the really cool, powerful thing about that walking tour is that the tour guides are all former political prisoners. Um, This gentleman is Jomo. I've had the great privilege of having him as my guide several times. He was incarcerated while he was still a high school student for helping to lead some protest at his high school when the apartheid government mandated that there be no more teaching in English and that all instruction would be only in the Afrikaans language. Um, And so he was imprisoned on Robben, Robben Island for helping to lead that protest. Wonderful person. Um, We also, and this is usually during the first weekend, we do go down to Cape Point. You saw a picture of that earlier. But one of the places that we will stop along the way is at Boulders Beach, which is home to a very large colony of African penguins. And I will tell you that until you've seen penguins in the sand, you haven't really seen penguins. Um, In this photo, this is a parent and feeding its chick. And so usually at the time of year that we're there, there are a lot of of the chicks about, and that's always fun to see. The second component, after learning about the history and culture, is visiting area advertising, public relations, and research agencies to learn about their work, to learn how they put together ideas for clients and construct campaigns to try to promote products and services to a very, very diverse audience. And I should say that audience is diverse not only in terms of race, but even more so in terms of economic status. Cape Town is where the very wealthiest people in South Africa live, for the, the beautiful beach properties, but it's also where some of the very poorest people live. And we will spend time in both of those extremes. These are some pictures from last year. Um, This is the King James Advertising Agency, terrific independent agency in Cape Town. This is Tabitha, one of the principals, and and she is a great person to get to network with. Um, This was at Ogilvy, big major agency, and there we were hearing some about their production process. Um, This is at a place called the CIA. Now, not the CIA that you're thinking about, but that stands for Consumer Insights Agency, and they are a really terrific qualitatively based research firm. And then we always try to do at least one visit to a well-established nonprofit organization to hear about how they promote themselves, to give us some ideas for the work you'll do for your, your clients. And so last year, we visited the Red Cross Children's Hospital in Cape Town. The third part of the program is actually my favorite part and one of the things I truly love about this particular study abroad opportunity. You will work as part of a small group, anywhere from four to six students, depending on total enrollment, to develop strategic communication recommendations and a campaign, really, for a local nonprofit organization. 
We've worked with a wide range of organizations. One of our clients last year was Sia Funda, and this gentleman, John Nicholson and his wife, are the people who founded Sia Funda. It is an after-school library. They turned their garage into a library for local children, and the kids get help with study skills, reading, and they also get a hot meal at least twice a week. And for many of those children, that's the only hot meal they get. Our other client last year was um, these two guys who are, again, both just terrific and have a lot of stuff going on individually, but they've teamed up together to put together a leadership and skills building program that they do in local high schools. Um, And the students who worked on their project came up with a name for it, called it Project One, and helped them really develop a visual identity and all sorts of materials to be able to tell their story. We've also worked with orphanages, we've worked with women's shelters, we've worked with a recycling firm, with a community garden. Um, Our partners at Arcadia identify the organizations for us, but the one thing that they all have in common is they are doing really important, really needed work, and they have great stories to tell but they haven't necessarily had the chance to tell those stories. And so that's what you'll be doing, is helping them tell their stories so that they can get more support in terms of program participants, volunteers, and donations. So that's the course part. Um, But obviously there's some other things that happen as well. You do certainly get some free time to be able to explore Cape Town and the region on your own. Um, Generally, you have at least four completely open days Um, Usually one of the first days during the first weekend that we're there is a free day. And then at the end of the program, the last Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, we don't schedule anything related to the course. Um, And then depending on your flight schedule, you might also have most of the day on the day that we depart from Cape Town. Um, Certainly both Arcadia and myself will give you ideas based on what students have done in the past. I can tell you that some of that has included going on a safari game drive, um, learning how to surf, zip lining, all kinds of things. Um, So there's a lot to choose from, but it's important to understand that all of the costs associated with those free days are additional. They are not included in the program fee. If you're interested, you should go to the International Center's webpage. It's just international.uky.edu. And then either from that page, you can click on Education Abroad and Exchanges, or just put EA in that um, URL address line. And then once you're on the Education Abroad page, click on Program Search. Um, That will then bring up a menu for you. You want to pick Cape Town as the city and then summer as the term, and then just click search, and you will see the Rainbow Nation program listed. The cost that we're estimating as of now, um, part of it will be billed to your UK account, and I'll explain in a minute how that will work, and then the rest are additional costs that you would have. So if you pay in-state tuition here at UK, your program fee and a couple of other um, fees that are associated with this will total $4,773. If you pay out-of-state tuition, it's a little bit higher because of the one credit of tuition that you pay for. Of that amount, $50 will be billed at the end of the month in which you start your online application. That's your application fee. Um, and then there's a $500 deposit that will be billed on February the 19th, which is one week after the application deadline. That $500 deposit holds your place in the program. The remainder of the UK account amount will be billed at the start of summer session, which is May the 6th or 7th, I believe. The additional cost, obviously, you have to get yourself over to South Africa and back. Right now, Education Abroad is estimating round-trip airfare at about $1,700. I can tell you in previous years, it's usually come in around $1,500 or so, but obviously, you know, we have no control over what the airlines charge. And I will talk towards the end of this presentation about how that booking works out. If you don't already have a passport, you'll need to get one. Um, The U.S. State Department is currently charging $145 for a passport. And then whatever you decide that you want to spend on souvenirs or any of those optional excursions on the free days are additional costs. Um, All of the basic meals, breakfast every morning at the guest house, lunch and dinner every day, all of those costs are included in your program fee. But if you do decide you want to splurge on a meal, then that would obviously cost a bit more as well. In terms of how you can pay for this, because we do realize that it's not cheap, um, Education Abroad does offer a number of scholarships. The application deadline for the scholarship is February the 1st, 
And it will be, if you are one of the people selected, it's a $1,500 scholarship. So we always say basically the education abroad scholarship is what would cover your airfare pretty much. Um, In order to be considered for that scholarship, you not only have to have completed the scholarship application, which is available on the Education Abroad website, but your program application for the program in Cape Town itself must also have been completed by February the 1st. Many students have also gotten some of the money they need to go abroad through fundraising. I know a number of students who have had success doing GoFundMe campaigns and suggesting to friends and relatives that instead of giving them gifts for the holidays or for their birthday or things like that, that they contribute to their GoFundMe account instead. Um, Generally, our travel is on Delta Airlines and Delta Partners. And so if you or anyone in your family has Sky Miles, that's a way to bring down the cost of the airfare at least a bit. But the Education Abroad website has a number of other ideas for creative ways of funding your study abroad experience. If you have questions about this particular program, the Nonprofits Program, please feel free to email me. You can see my email address there on the screen. And again, one more picture for this part of the presentation, just showing the incredible beauty of Cape Town. Um, This picture was actually taken on the first day of the program last year. So we do get you onto the beach pretty darn quickly. The second course, which as I mentioned earlier is new this year, is a course focusing on promoting the South African wine industry. Wine is one of South Africa's largest exports and it's a growing area for for the South African economy. This program will begin immediately after the first program ends. Actually, the students who are coming in to only do the wine course will be arriving on the flight that then becomes the turnaround flight back to the US for students who are only going to do the nonprofits course. Again, this is three weeks long, same application deadline, and so the same rules about the scholarship apply to this as well. And this is is also four credits. Again, it can be taken for the ISC Capstone program. Um, This program, as with the nonprofits program, is open to all majors at UK. But with this one, you will have to be 21 years old on or before June the 19th in order to participate. I will mention, actually, the, the legal drinking age in South Africa is 18. But for this program, you do will need to be 21. This program also has a number of components to it. We will be doing some cultural visits. There will be a little bit of overlap because this program will also go to Robben Island and go to Cape Point. But one of the things that we're doing in this program different from the other is that we will be visiting the San Cultural Village. Um, The San and the Khoi Khoi were the two native peoples who were living in South Africa before the British or the Dutch ever showed up. Um, And there is a cultural center that preserves the San heritage that we'll be going to very early on. You probably will not be surprised to hear that we will be visiting a number of wineries as well, um, and in several of the different wine regions of South Africa. All of these are within an easy drive of Cape Town, just so you know. Um, And I'll talk about some of them as as we come to some pictures in just a bit. Um, We will be learning not only about the wine industry, but also about some of the key issues currently under discussion in the winelands, um, including issues about land ownership, Um, So who actually owns the land and who has the rights to the land and also employment, Um, what the industry is trying to do in order to more fully involve a range of people in what is going on with wine in South Africa. I'm very excited that we will be for this program working with Wines of South Africa. Um, You can see their logo there and those are the colors of the South African flag. Um, Wines of South Africa is a trade association that represents all of the South African wineries that export their product outside of South Africa. And their mission is to promote South African wines in key international markets. Their major markets, the markets where South Africa wine has had a presence for the longest period of time, the United Kingdom, Germany, Sweden, and the Netherlands. And again, sort of mentioned this in passing a few minutes ago, um, early colonization in South Africa was first by the Dutch, and so that explains why the Netherlands is still a very prominent market, and then secondly by the British, and so there you have the United Kingdom. But as you see, they've got a number of developing markets where they're really trying to build business for South African wine, and the United States is one of those. They do have an office in New York City, um, in addition to their headquarters office in um, South Africa itself. So 
just to start to give you a flavor of what it looks like and some of the places that we'll be visiting, Hoot Constantia is one of the oldest wineries in the country. The Constantia wine region is the closest in region to the city of Cape Town itself. And we will be going to at least a couple of wineries there, Hoot Constantia certainly, and then um, um, at least one other winery in that area. And we will do a tour. And I should have mentioned earlier, the time that we're there, Southern Hemisphere, so the seasons are flipped from what they are here. So it will be autumn going into winter. Um, But don't worry, we should not see any snow at all. And the temperatures will probably be in the 70s and and the 60s. Um, But you can see how beautiful it is. Um, Here's another view in Constantia. This is a different wine estate there. Again, just beautiful, wide open skies and gorgeous vistas. Stellenbosch is the largest of the wine towns, and it is where Wines of South Africa is headquartered. This particular winery in this picture, Seven Sisters, um, and the woman on the left is one of the sisters. Her name is Vivian. They are were one of the early wineries to be owned by non-whites in South Africa. And they do a lot to promote not only their own wines, but also those of other winemakers who also come from either... Um, black or colored backgrounds. In South Africa, colored is the term that's used for people of mixed race. Um, And so we will be visiting Seven Sisters and having actually a traditional meal meal there, along with tasting some of their wines. And the projects that you'll be working on for this one, you'll be in one of two groups. Um, Again, depending on enrollment, if we have a lot of people, um, there may be a third group as well. But one group will be focused on developing ISC recommendations to convince U.S. wine drinkers to try South African wine or to buy more South African wine than they currently are. Um, Not all of the South African wineries who export export to the United States, but many of them do. And so it is perfectly feasible to be promoting the sale of South African wine here in the U.S. And then the second group will be coming up with recommendations promoting travel to South Africa focused around the wine industry by Americans. So looking at the tourism side of things as well. This is another one of the regions we'll visit. Elgin is actually um, a a newer wine region, I would say. Elgin, for many, many years, was known primarily for fruit production. It's where most of the apples and pears um, and other similar produce in South Africa is, is being grown. But increasingly, there are farmers turning either all or part of their land over to growing grapes instead of growing apples and pears. Um, The winery in this picture is a winery called Paul Wallace. Um, Mr. Wallace himself is a very well-known wine industry consultant, has helped a lot of the wineries getting started in South Africa, and hopefully we will be visiting them. And his wife, Nikki, is very big in the marketing of South African wine. Um, And then we will also be going to really, aside from Cape Town itself, my very favorite place in South Africa. Hermanus is a coastal town. Um, At certain times of the year, although we'll be a little bit too early for it, it's known for the whales that come into the bay to um, have their young. But it's beautiful no matter what time of the year that you're there, as you can tell. We are planning to do actually an overnight stay in Hermanus to give you time to explore a little bit more of that area. And then we also will hopefully be doing a service project for about half a day at this um, institution. The Pebbles Project was actually started over in Stellenbosch, so again, that main wine city. And it was a program designed to really provide after school and weekend programming for the children of the farm workers. So if their parents were still working and and certainly during harvest and some other times of the year, the hours on the wine estates are very, very long. And so there really is a need for, you know, for something for the kids to be doing to be looked after. Um, Just within the last three years or so, they have started another outpost of pebbles in the Hemelon Ard. And the Hemelon Ard, it means heaven on earth. And it is the wine region that is right next to Hermanus, actually just behind that ridge of hills that you see in the larger photo. And one of the wineries we'll be visiting, Creation, my very favorite winery in South Africa, really was the inspiration behind starting a branch of pebbles in this area. Um, Creation does some terrific wine, but what they're particularly known for is their food and wine pairings. And both for the tourism group, but also for the group promoting the sale of South African wine in the U.S., being able to explain to people about what kinds of food go best with the different types of South African wine can be very appealing. So we will be doing a meal at Creation and doing a, a food and wine pairing there. And again, you can see just a beautiful, beautiful area. Um, this other, and this is particularly for the tourism group, but I think, in fact, I'm sure we'll all enjoy this. The town of Franschhoek 
which is another small wine town. So Stellenbosch that I mentioned earlier, Franschhoek, and a town called Parl are all in the same area. And what Franschhoek started a few years ago was a very, very cool idea, the Franschhoek Wine Tram. So you book to go on the tram, and it, there is an actual train associated with it that goes to a couple of wineries, but for the most part, you're riding on this little bus that is made to look like a train. And you can visit up to six wineries in one day. You spend an hour at each of them. I will say, I think we'll, I think we'll hold it to five for us. Um, but it's a chance to be able to experience a number of different wineries. Obviously, you're not driving, which is a very good thing. Um, we will eat at one of the wineries. And again, depending on the size of the group and people's comfort level, we might even split up and try some different routes because there are three separate wine routes, each with different wineries as part of them. Um, but we will spend a day over in Franschhoek having the wine tram experience. This program also has free days. Um, the middle weekend this time, there will be one free day. And then again, the final weekend, the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday will be open. And again, you'll have the chance either to revisit places you went before or try out some new places. And once again, you will probably also have most of our departure day, depending on your flight schedule. Um, the flight that many of us are usually on to go back to the U.S. doesn't leave till about 11 o'clock at night. This one is a little bit more expensive, um, mostly because we're going to be going to a number of places outside of Cape Town that we don't normally do with the nonprofits course. You can see the cost there. Again, the reason that the cost for out-of-state students is higher is because out-of-state tuition is more expensive than in-state. The billing works the same way. But one very important thing to know is that if you do plan to do both programs, you can subtract either $611 if you pay in-state tuition or a little over 1300 if you pay out of state, because you will only pay one application fee, one administrative fee, and you will only pay for one credit of EAP tuition. This one also additional cost. Again, obviously, if you're doing both programs, you're only going to pay for airfare once. Um, this, again, most of your meals are covered, are included in the program fee, but we are not paying for any of the wine tastings for you. And there are some special meals, some of those food and wine pairing meals, where um, the program fee does not cover the cost of that. But again, souvenirs and optional excursions will cost you additional as well. Um, so a little bit more about the wine tastings. While you are required to participate in all of the course activities, so you have to go to all of the different things that we're doing, you are not required to taste wine if you don't want to. If there's a day that you want to skip on tasting or if you just don't really like wine but you're interested in the program otherwise, that's perfectly okay. You do not have to taste. And so if you don't taste, you don't pay to taste. Um, if you do, though, want to taste, it's also the case that at many of the wineries, not all, but at many, um, they will waive their tasting fee if you buy a bottle of wine. And also, many of the wineries have different levels of tasting possible. Um, it varies depending on how many different wines you taste and also the quality level of what you choose to taste. And so all of those decisions are, are up to you, and that will affect how much that additional cost is. Um, the $135 that's estimated is based on really doing the high-end tasting at most places. Um, with this one as well, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Um, these last couple pictures, the top one especially, are meant to tempt you a little bit more. Um, very often you can buy a, a cheese and charcuterie platter to go along with your tasting. And then um, the picture in the lower right-hand corner, that is um, Valerie and Yves Ducomont. They are the couple who own the guest house where we stay in Cape Town. Um, and on free days, when many times the students are off doing, as I said, things like zip lining or surfing, I am going to wineries with Valerie and Eve, and I will tell you that they are absolutely delightful people. Um, just a few more details. As I mentioned already, if you do decide to participate in both programs, and um, trust me, I think that three weeks in Cape Town will feel like not long enough to you, and you might want to stay for those extra three weeks. Um, it does take off some of the costs that would, you would otherwise be paying. Um, you will, though, need to submit a separate application for each program. It's just that Education Abroad will flag your application and make sure that you don't get double billed for the application fee, the administrative fee, or that one credit of EAP 599. So if you do only one of the two programs, you will earn four credits of tuition, all at the 300 level or higher. If you do both programs, you will earn seven credits of tuition. 
And I believe it's the case that as far as financial aid is concerned, anything over six credits is considered full-time in the summer. So if you do already receive financial aid and you're thinking about doing both programs, it's worth talking to your financial aid counselor to see if your financial aid might apply to at least part of the cost. If you're planning to do either program as your capstone course for ISC, um, which would mean that you would have completed already both of your PATH courses, um, but this is certainly an option, please just mention that in your essay or statement of interest that is included with your application. That way, both Education Abroad and I will know that we will need to make sure that we put you in the capstone course number rather than the special topics course number. If you are doing either of the programs for capstone credit, there are a couple of additional assignments you will complete. I promise nothing too scary, but we need to make it comparable to what you'd be doing if you were here on campus. And you also will take the ISC mastery exam that all of our students take towards the end of the capstone course. Um, That additional work will be done while you're in Cape Town, so it's not something that you'll have to complete once you get back to the U.S., Um, but you will be doing a little bit more work than what the students who are just doing the, the program for special topics credit will be doing. As far as the travel is concerned, once we get past the application deadline, which again is February the 12th, but February 1st if you're planning on also applying for an Education Abroad Scholarship, and then the deposit deadline, which is February the 19th, I will then work with Education Abroad to get my airfare booked. Um, Once that's done, I will then share my details with all of the students participating in the programs. You are certainly free to travel on your own, and I'll mention a little bit more about that in a second. But if you would like to travel along with me, that's also obviously fine. Um, Students participating in the nonprofits course, you could fly over with me. I obviously will be staying on, so you'd be on your own coming back, but I will talk you through that process, and I promise it won't be scary. And then those of you who are doing only the wine promotion course, obviously you would travel over on your own, but again, make sure you know how that works and and what would happen, and then you can travel back with me at the conclusion of that course. Um, Generally, the routing that we've been using is leaving out of Lexington and taking Delta to either Atlanta or Detroit then another Delta flight over to Amsterdam, and then KLM, which is a Delta partner, has a direct flight to Cape Town from Amsterdam, and then the reverse going back. But if you do want to travel on your own, if you have some places you want to stop off, either on the way there or the way back, um, or you just find a cheaper fare with a different routing, then as long as you arrive and, and also depart, within a window that Arcadia will specify, and I will tell you they're fairly generous about this, then Arcadia will make sure that you get your transport from the Cape Town airport to the guest house and then back again. 